Hey guys and welcome to episode 3 on Derail Valley Simulator. This is Mark. Now today we're going to be taking our second train um, out of the harbour. We're going to be working from the harbour today since though we worked into here in episode 1. It is a fine looking morning in July, the 22nd of July in game. Just coming up to 6am so we have a bit of admin to take care of before we actually get out of the depot. Now that day hasn't changed in game. It should have done but it hasn't. I'm not sure why. Uh, the weather also doesn't seem to be following what's going on on there because according to that we should have a thunderstorm going on and we don't. Anyway, fees. We've got some fees to pay and the first thing we'll do is go on that. We'll go on the uh, click confirm. So we have to pay the insurance. Uh, the insurance only needs you to pay 100 to clear all the fees apparently. So we need to go to our wallet. Set our wallet to pay $100. There we go. So we paid the insurance and that's been cleared off for that now. So we can now buy new licenses. Now we have got a decent wad of cash. We've got nearly 20 grand. Um, let's have a look at what licenses we can do. So we can do shunting for a grand. So shall we have a look at doing some shunting? Get the shunting license. Get the first one out of the way. The uh, cheapest one out of the way first. It's going to be a bit of a grind to get here in the end in the end anyway. So... We've got our shunting license. So this license grants access to all orders in of orders of the shunting type. This order type involves loading and unloading cars within an industry from or to occupied storage trucks. So this should allow us to open up quite a bit of um, new content, I suppose. Now I'm going to keep my licenses on this table because what I did earlier is when we did the tutorial, I've, I've thrown my licenses on floor in tutorial and I can't remember what licenses I've got although it does tell me on there I suppose I'll, I'll leave it there for now um, so let's have a look at the actual map and see what's what around here we've got loads of different uh, shunting ones laying around so let's have a little look uh, the goods will do this then to the goods factory in town right so first of all we'll go to our order validator get the order validated so the specs chemicals trade shipment of tooling AG electronics nova shipment of tooling our train is in e50 track so let's get our station map up uh, overview so yard e is right up here our loco was down here in, in yard c i guess i left it down there and didn't bring it back which was pretty stupid to be honest with you okay so unfortunately i had to end the uh, recording on um, episode 3 and then sort of move on to the next day. In the meantime, there's been loads of helpful comments actually on episode 2, so cheers for that, guys. Uh, a lot of things I've learnt. One of them is that I should have parked my loco where it was meant to be for the service before I actually started the service. Um, so, for future reference, I need to do that. I can't do that right now, obviously, because I've already started the service. But for episode 4, we will do that. So, we need to head over to track E50. Uh, I've now switched as well to actually using um, the standard mode rather than realistic, I'm using standard mode. So we're going to go standard just because it allows us a lot of other things. We can use the proper leap tool and stuff like that, so we can leap around more. You can't do that in realistic mode. You can use the external camera as well in standard mode, which is useful because we can fly around and do external shots and have a look at things a bit better and sort of see the lay of the land um, and generally just have a a bit better experience. I feel like realistic's probably not really explained well enough what it actually is um, at the moment. So anyway, we need to head to track E5, uh, E50 it is. So we're in B at the moment. We're down here at the moment in B. We need to head up and along to E and get the uh, train from there that we're taking up to the harbour to the uh, goods factory in town. Also, you can when you have the mouse selected, you can change points actually in the uh, when you press Alt, you can change points without using the uh, switch tool, which is quite cool. That's useful. Alright, let's jump in. Um, first thing I need to do, actually, is make sure... Because one thing I did on the... Um, if I can't, I'll show you what I mean. I'm sure a lot of you know this already, and I'm just a noob. But for anybody that doesn't... When I drove the service the other day, I drove... We drove into here on episode two with this end lead, and we had no grills on the front. So the reason we kept overheating on the climb out of the uh, steel mill is because the grill was on the back; it wasn't getting any air in. So we need to check first of all on the um, 
don't go to my wall map, there it is. Also on standard mode, you can see your actual um, thing, where you, you are on the map, and where you need to go and stuff as well. So, we're heading up to the goods factory in town, which is there. We can actually head either way out of here, I guess. Um, quickest way is to head out in this direction, to the east. So... We want the grill to be on the front heading east, which it would be if we're in the direction that we are now, so we don't need to turn the loco. Um, our next target for unlocking licenses wise is going to be to get a hold of the um, license for multiple units. That way we can couple two units together and actually run them in multiple, and it will make us a lot better off power wise. Um, so yeah, the first target for us is to get hold of the multiple unit license, which is thirty thousand dollars. We currently have uh, eighteen thousand nine hundred forty-seven, and this job will earn us twelve thousand twelve thousand. So if we can do this on time, we know catastrophes, which hopefully we can then we should have enough to get the actual multiple unit license straight after this for our next task and then we can take something a bit heavier we won't overeat quite as much and, and stuff like that so it'll make everything a little bit easier for us moving forwards but yeah cheers for all the comments on uh, episode two do appreciate those and i've learned quite a lot from them um one is for instance i don't need to keep moving my mouse around all the time i can just control stuff by like tapping alt and then the mouse and stuff and i can just sort of drive from this position which is easy. Uh, what we do need to do is change this point up here because we need to head right. So again, without getting the switch control out, I can just tap Alt, and then when your mouse appears, you can actually just flick it with the uh, mouse instead. So I can sort of stand at the back and control everything from here without having to sort of leap around and bounce the view around and stuff. And this makes everything a little bit better viewing, I would imagine, as well. Obviously, if I want to move the view, I do have to... Uh, you know, we press halt again and remember to do that. Now, I'm not overly familiar with where we're going here, so let's have a look where our train is. Again, I should have already done this. Uh, this is, we're well, not very far into the episode, but this is the first bad mark of the episode. We want to go left over these two, and then yard E is directly in front of us. Oh, you can actually see there. You can, it shows your sign, so we're on E50, but we need to go through the yard anyway, because we're going on to the other end, as I've said. Uh, give it a little blast on the horn. We're going through the yard. E50 is the track we're looking for. There it is. So we're this rake here that we want to be on. Um, where my mouse is. So we want to go through the sidings and then connect onto that rake at the other end with our grills facing forward so we don't have to worry about any catastrophes going on. Yeah, thanks to the uh, guys in the chat that helped with like changing cameras and stuff like that. Holding out. Sorry that I was such a noob in the first couple of episodes. I'm sure I'm still going to be a massive noob now, but um, yeah, it's it's quite helpful. You got the driving controls, obviously. If you press F4 as well, you do get the full sort of driving control set up, which is quite nice. I prefer to do it physically with the gauges and everything in front of me, um, and it's obviously been made a lot easier now with the fact that I can actually see all my gauges and everything at once and just do it with the click of a mouse. Okay, so we need to go past these points. I'm just going to give a two on the horn, just going towards the crossing. Go past this point, we need to start now looking to reverse. It's our first line on the left there. So we need to go right then left, which is what we'll do. So now we need to fling it into reverse. We're going to back onto our train and then we're going to head out up the line to the uh, goods factory in town. So we're going to go right, then we're going to go left and bounce the camera all over. So we have 85 minutes to do this in. We've got 183 tons, which is slightly more than what we had on the first trip. We had um, 171 tons on the first trip. I don't think we'd have actually struggled that much on the first trip had we have had the um, 
grills at the right end. We were screwed over by the fact that they had the grills at the wrong end, and that was a really stupid ever on my part. Um, I should have known better than that really. Right, let's think about getting some brakes in. See, obviously I can't use, I could use F4 actually here and uh, control it that way, but I, li I like the physical aspect of moving stuff. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if, would you, I've got a VR headset, which I don't have set up at the minute. Would it be worth me actually having, having a go in the VR and seeing what it's like? See what you think. I, I don't know whether it's something people would want to see in VR or not. To see what it's like. I feel like the experience would be just for me, whereas anyone else wouldn't really get a better experience. If that makes sense. Okay, so we want to turn that tail light off. We want to make sure our handbrakes are off, which they are. Um, these handles under here, by the way, somebody said in the comments they're to do with the air reserve tank. Um, I'm going to see if I can move it without having to pull those first. Um, basically, it releases the air in the tank, I assume. Um, that handbrake was on, so there was one handbrake on. Let's dash back to the loco. Or past it in my case. Right. Let's jump in. Okay, so. Let's apply some train brake. Take the loco brake off. That part. Apply some train brake. We want to get the uh, lights on the rear to off, which is straight upwards. And we've got a headlight on there in the front. So we're all good, ready to go. Okay, so now we're coupled up, we're ready to depart, we can lock the camera again. Let's have a little look at this F4 thing actually, because we can sort of see brake pipe pressures and everything on here. So let's have a look at this actually driving, um, because I'm sure people may want to see this if they haven't already. Um, you can make it disappear by pressing Alt, so if you can leave it on that screen whilst it's there. Um, you can also get your keyboard instructions, which is a lot more now I'm in standard mode, no noticeably. There's a lot more there in standard mode than there was in realistic, I noticed that for certain. Uh, got, to con got to close all those individually, which is quite a bit fast, but... Right. So our reverser is in uh, reverse there, so we've put it into forward now. We've basically got the temperatures, the traction motors and stuff on there as well. Uh, and the ammeter. Everything you need is essentially over here. Uh, we've got the sander on as well. Everything we need we can see over on this cigarette screen here. So, take the brakes off. Let's see if we can move for starters. Pressure is exactly as I would expect from that, so uh, let's hope that things will actually happen this time. You can do it with a mouse wheel as well, actually. Oh. What did I not do? What haven't I done? Well, one thing we have done is we've disconnected from the train. Did I not up? Uh, we need to get out and mess with the hoses. I think I might have done a really bad thing there. And I may have... Um, I've got a feeling what I did there was... Possibly not couple the loco up. <laughs> anyway, we'll find out in a minute. Let's have a look. I thought I coupled up. I could swear I coupled up, but apparently I didn't. So, we're going really well. Right, let's couple back onto the train. That's more time wasted. No, well, a couple of this, we're buffered up. Right. Let's get back between. Did I not tighten the coupling? I may have been too busy talking and not actually tightened the coupling, you know. Right, air hoses. We won't break at the moment. Health and safety don't mind. They've uh, told me they're not, they're not keeping an eye on me, they just let me do what I want. Right. This time, hopefully, we will find that we actually have some brake pressure and we can move without snapping brake hoses and stuff. Forward gear. We'll try it again with the F4 uh, turned on. Right, let's try this again. So, forward gear. Um, independent brakes on, still the loco brake because I was holding it on that. So, brake cylinder to zero, brake pipe to five, main res to eight. I think that was 7.6 before, so I reckon I could have probably read it from that. Right. Is the train coming with us? It is coming with us. Well, that's a relief. 
Alright. Let's load this screen back up. And... What buttons are my map on? Five. We're coming out of, then, the... Harbour down here. Just let me turn that off. Coming out of the harbour, we want to go all the way up this valley, basically, all the way to the goods factory in town. Which is where we're heading eventually. So, GF, the good factory in town. Got a little container train going on. Alright, back onto this screen. F4. And we can control the train from this nice little panel. I thought this was oil temperature, but it's actually the uh, traction motor temperature. It's talking of oil and levels and stuff, so we've got a nice amount of fuel in there, over three quarters of a tank. We've got over three quarters of a tank of oil as well, so we're, we're generally good on those things. We don't have to worry about that. Now, as I say, those who watched um, the original series that we did on um, Overhaul, May remember we had a load of farces coming up this line with banking locos and all sorts and trying to push a train, then I left the banker behind. Um, that was because I was overheating from facing the wrong way going up this hill, so let's see if it works this time. I've got the grills at the front, we're facing forwards. Hopefully, fingers crossed, things will go smoother this time. And we will have learned lessons from the past. So the limit around here is 40 in a second. Let's have a little look on the outside view. So you've got all sorts of different fins here. I'm not sure exactly what these... That's couplings. Uh, I'm not sure entirely what all that means. I will have to look into that. Basically, I think you can select fins and put handbrakes on, I'm guessing, as well. So that's actually uh, pretty interesting. But it's nice how you can sort of look at it from an outside view for a bit more like Train Sim Classic sort of views. You can get screenshots and stuff on the move as well, which is nice. And you can drive it from the outside view as well. So, uh, actually a very nice little addition. Obviously, remember in realistic mode, you can't actually do that. You can't use the outside cameras. So I don't really see the benefit of using realistic mode. I think it penalises you too much. So I'm just watching the, the oil pressure because it is quite high. The uh, temperature, sorry, the traction motors. Once again, I think we are going to start struggling up here. It is quite a steep grade. Oh, so F5. What does F5 do? Can I... F5, like, pauses the game and you can move around. That's nice. It's like photo mode, basically. I'm just trying all the various buttons and experimenting. F3 is a static camera that you can fly around with, so it's more like your train sim classic sort of thing. Train sim world. So these are uh, these are obviously additions that have come in the uh, the recent version of the game. We're just gonna watch with the uh, sorry with the simulator version of the game. Just watching traction motor temperatures. I'm also watching the speed, which is yeah, nose diving. If we can hold 18, 19. And get off the steepest bit will be okay, but I, I have concerns. I can honestly see us. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I can honestly see us having to get a banker again, just like last time when I did this. There we are. We've just hit 90 on the temperature. Um. And this is a long climb. I know that because I remember last time we saw it. <laughs> uh, where does it actually end? Is it somewhere around here? It seems to ease as you get around there because it doesn't look like it's going any higher really up the hillside. If we can get through these tunnels, I think we're okay. We may have to stop and just try and get some cool wind into it though. Good job, not when we we're facing backwards, we'd have definitely never made it. We are holding about 18, but the, the thing is, the temperature is going up still. Knock it back one more notch and see if we can get anywhere. 
2.3% gradient. Plus 2.3. Uh, I wonder what it was going the other way. That'll be on this side, which I can't probably get to in the tunnel. Oh, maybe there. 1.1, so it's just got steeper. We may have to stop in a second and get an assisting loco. Obviously, because we don't have the license for um, assisting, you know, for multiple units, we're going to have to we'll have to double man them, sort of thing. I like the sound occlusion in the tunnels. That's that's a nice addition. Trying to give it a little bit more power. So, what I'm noticing from this basically is our limit is going to be about 160 70 tons with this loco. This is proving to be a major struggle. Just get out of the tunnel at least, at this point. And then we can assess the situation whether we want to stop for a breather and try and chug on to the next bit. Or if there's no break in the gradient, we might have to stop. The temperatures are getting a bit too high, I think, at the minute. We're down to 10 now. Just checking, I definitely have that break off. I don't know if on this game the... Uh, why am I getting out? What am I doing? I can press F3 to get out. I don't need to get out physically. Oh dear. Right. We're going to have to stop. Got no choice. Um, I can use F3 to fly around and sort of try and work out where the top of this gradient is. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's anywhere near us. Oh, is it there? It goes to 1.6 there, which is probably doable. But it certainly won't be easy. I know that much. I've picked a great place to stop, haven't I? Can't get out either side because if I do, I fall straight down a ravine. Right, temperature's dropping. We will try and move it on a bit further with a nice low temperature and see if we can do anything, but uh, I think it's going to be too much for one loco. We'll put a bit of power on to sort of lift us. Because the last thing we want to do is roll backwards down the hill, which is what exactly what we're doing right now. Try some loco break. No, it's not going to work. Okay, train break. So that's not going to work. We've, we've got too much weight on. Okay, so Thunderbirds are go. I repeat, Thunderbirds are go. International Rescue is on its way. Luckily, the loco that I found... It was the loco that I found in episode 2, I think. It was just in the sidings here. Um, and we were able to get it from the, the harbour. Now, this is because we don't have the multiple working license yet. If it's the same as Derail Valley Overhaul, what I'll be able to do is essentially couple this to the back of the train, push with this loco. We'll have to, when we get to the summit, somehow avoid basically having a major accident because I will have to stop the train whilst driving this loco as well, which could be a farce. Hopefully, it's providing something entertaining and not just... Um, Simple. It's probably provided something frustrating as well for those that know what they're doing, and I don't. But uh, we live and learn. 160 tons is probably the limit, at least, for me getting that train up that hill. I don't even think at 160 tons we would have got up there. I feel like the DE2 can really not shift very much up there. Oh, it is essentially, I guess, a shunter. So, all right. Let's get back sat here. We should be clear all the way through because it's the same route that we took earlier. So. For us, it's a case of just flying on through and getting on with it. So it's 50 kilometers an hour, I believe, in the yard here. That's the speed we're going to do anyway. There's already something else on track 50 where we were earlier. But I think the back of the train is actually still in this tunnel. Really did not stop in a sensible place. So 
So we're on a 2.2% gradient here, I believe. Which is about 1 in 40 ish. It's quite steep. I'm having to provide power to keep it moving light engine. That shot sort of tells you how steep it is, and it's even then not flying away. There's the back of the train. So we will couple up and we'll connect the brake hose. Do I want to be loose coupled or brake to the back? You know, I might try braked as well. I feel like that'd be sensible. <laughs> Otherwise, we've got a loose, uh, like a, a loose loco bouncing around at the back of the train. Oh dear. Clunk. That was a big clunk as well. Right. Operation Bodge. Operation Bodge isn't going very well, let's be honest there. Operation Bodge is rolling back down the hill. Basically, I'm going to have to try and keep a bit of power there. Right, that should be enough brake pressure to hold us. We'll have to remember to remove that loco brake, obviously. So we got the coupling on. Remember to tighten it, otherwise we'll leave a loco down the hill. The uh, loco's now dropped back a little bit off the coupling. There we go. Connect the, cat, the uh, air hoses. We don't need a headlight on anymore. So we can turn the headlight off. And we want a tail light on, really. So we've got a tail light on there. Leave it in forward, power off for the moment. Loco brake off, but you can see we're showing three bar, nearly four bar of brakes because the brakes are applied to the train from the lead loco. So what we need to do in the rear loco, I believe, make sure the handbrake's off, which it is obviously because we've just come up the hill. Forward gear. Can I get away with two notches of power? Get away with that. Right, now to the front loco. Because the loco at the back's now powering, we need to get in the front one and get it away before the temperature climbs too much. So, again, power. Brakes off. Power. We're moving. We are moving. It's working. Somehow it's working. I mean... But again, this is what I love about DRL Valley, is the logic's there, if you, if you try it, you can, you'll find out if it works or not. The issue is we've got power coming from the back of the train now, no matter what, we can't easily get back there. We're already overheating, we are. Let's just go back, because we know we're on a hill, we can, we can afford to run back to the battle loco whilst we're going nice and steady. It's not so easy to run down this side of the train. I wonder if I could do this through F2 and F3 somehow. Uh, press F to enter, there we are. So this one's overheating as well. The temperature is now falling, so we're on a you know we're on a plus there with that. So we can just leave the back one hopefully ticking over. Well when I can go faster walking than I can driving. Well we're getting faster. Temperature is dropping. We might be okay here, guys. To not by 8% gradient coming up. We were really close to actually getting over there, weren't we? We might have just about staggered up this bit on its own. Because I did stop it, although I think it would have been a struggle, and we might have got stuck in a tunnel, which I really wouldn't have wanted to do. Hello, mate, at back. That, that back drive is crap. I don't know why I keep trying to do a tube tunnel. No point. Right, the temperatures are very stable now, so I can afford to power up a bit more. So we can give it plenty of power. We're not able to give it much speed. But we're giving it plenty of power. It does steepen again. As soon as we get to a, a gradient sign that says downhill, we need to stop the train, get to the back of the train, 
and basically shut the power at the back of the train. What's this here? So it's 1.6 up. Let's get some more power in then. We are essentially taking probably 75% of the work from the front of the train. The, the back part is only, the local at the back is only doing about 25% of our work. Probably be a sensible time to try and get a screenshot of some sort. This. What did that say? So it's still a 1 point whatever gradient. 1.7 I think it was, so... So front locos power in, it's just overheating actually a bit. And then you can hear the loco at the back's quite quiet. Yeah, we're slightly overheating, so let's get the power off a little bit. We're doing quite nicely really. I do want to try and get a nice screenshot somewhere whilst we've got both locos on. The main mess is only 6.6, .6. that's not right, is it? Shouldn't that be 8? Half a tank of fuel. We're easing, we're dropping a bit of speed here. I reckon I uh, probably could have done with doing something with the brakes really when I uh, coupled the other engine on. Maybe I should have run the air reserve pulls. So that's cool, you can see how you press that button you get the mechanical sort of information on the loco. One point nine percent so it has steepened up again somewhere along that section. But still we continue to climb. In terms of the map, where are we? We're doing quite well. Oh no, I've done it, haven't I? Do you know, I think I might be copying exactly what I did in uh, Series 1. Whereby I've gone the wrong way. But we noticed it on that section last time. There's no actual direct connection, is there, between those two? I don't think. I think it's a viaduct. In which case, we're going to have to go left and all the way around the steel mill side. Well, I don't want to fast travel. I think that's what I'm going to have to do here. That, that's... yeah. Well, there goes the 85 minutes opportunity. Can I get that screenshot somewhere that I want? The weather... the weather... it seems like it's on the change, but at the same time it doesn't, weirdly. It feels like it's mistier than it was before. I feel like we're speeding up a bit here as well. Yeah, we are up to 40. I wonder if we're now over the summit. And in which case, should I get to the back loco? It's a good test of whether I can do it this way. Uh. Oh, I can! So if you go in F3, oh my god. If you go in F3, you can change, um, oh my dear days. Get inside. Jesus. If you go in F3 mode, you can, um, you can actually jump into another loco with F. Which is uh, quite a big benefit there, really. So we're on a 70, mile, a 70 km an hour, 70 km an hour section of track. It looks like it's going to stay quite nice high speeds along there. So let's get more power on. 
We don't want to lose speed if we can avoid it, because we've got to go. If we want to put speed on, we're going to go to the backlog and put power on again now. All that's doing at this moment in time is dead waiting. I'm not sure if we've got enough fuel to get back to the other end of the line either. After my um, balls up. Speed drop to 80. Let's power off. So it's starting to get sort of a bit darker now, uh, which we need to be aware of. We're going to need the headlights on soon. It does actually look a bit rainy to me. Looks a bit stormy. Oh wow, that, that looks quite stormy. Yeah, the weather's on the change. Right, brakes in, brakes in, because we're coming down to the junction soon. It's actually gone up to 120, but I'm not going to even attempt to speed up here based on the dramas we've had around here before. And I can already see, as we get into this tunnel, there's some signage saying 60, and it's 0.3 to the junction by the looks. So, let us prepare for this junction where you can see it's a sharp curve um, here. So we need to be prepared for that. Just get the speed down to 40 or 50. Get down to 45. And we'll uh, take it from there. Obviously, remember, when we've got any steep climbs coming up, we've got the local on the back to help, but I need to remember to get down there to turn it on, essentially. At the moment, it's just a dead swing over at the back. What are we looking at here? 40, so, yep. This is actually where we developed before, I think. We went down the side of this ravine. Yeah, this sky is looking rather menacing now. Gone is the sun and, and yeah, rain's here. Right, wipers, where are they? The wipers are very squeaky. Yeah? So yeah, we're coming around here. So we'll go through the steel mill. I'm going to risk not taking fuel. I'm going to assume because there's a um, diesel service up there that I can take fuel at the harbour, at the uh, town. Because to take this log off to get fuel is going to take 5 to 10 minutes, I assume. So, I don't want to be doing that if I can avoid it. So we need to get the brakes into... Get us down to 60 kilometers an hour here. Because we are speeding a bit. Just for this junction, that is. This was just the view, actually, because I can't quite see the uh, brakes there. I see more of the roof than the brake handle. I like driving it like this with the actual buttons, the actual levers and stuff. Gives a good feeling. Right, so next junction, we join the, uh, the line from whatever that is. Don't know what they, I don't know what they are. It doesn't tell me what they are. I can't, I've, I've not played enough of the game to know what each of these means. Um, but yeah, we're turning them right here onto this line, then we want to turn right and go straight through the steel mill. Now we know this is the summit of the climb where we dropped into the steel mill, or came out of the steel mill the other day, in episode 2. So, we know we need to keep on our toes down here, and be ready with the brakes actually, because we're going to come down the hill quite fast. It's a minus 1.1. So we will speed up quite a bit, I think, coming down here. There's a bit of fog around in the air now. Or mist or something, I'm not sure what it is, but... There's something blowing across in front of the lights. Which is impairing the uh, visibility a little bit. Right, fog patches. So, 80 kilometers an hour limit, but we know it drops to 50. So again, I'm not touching power. We're just going over the summit now, so it'll get steep, and you can see the speed is rising. So let's get brakes in. Remember, we do have a bit of extra work with that local on the back, obviously. Um, going to be causing a bit of extra drag on the back when we go up a hill, but also when we go down a hill, it's going to be extra weight that's, you know, having to slow down. So it's just gone to a minus 1.8. Now we need to turn right at the junction just ahead, which is coming up. I'm currently just getting the, the brakes in, so I can try and get speed down towards the uh, required 50 kilometres an hour. 
We've got to make sure that we set the points of the yard entry as well to go through the yard, not down any sidings that are blocked off. Points are set to go right, which is good because we want to go to the right. So that's fine. We're going essentially straight on. I like all the lights in the steel mill. Look at the lights all showing there. That's very nice. We definitely haven't picked the sort of best time to do this run. It's uh, not ideal lighting. Can't see. The weather's turned. How are we looking for going through? Um, this is going to be a, a real test of whether I know what I'm doing. The first set of points is showing to the left we want to go right, because we left them facing that way, I guess. And then the left, so we're safe there. So let's get the uh, external camera on. Let's have a look at ourselves going through the, uh, going through the yards here. Oh, wow. non-stop through the steel mill so we know it climbs a bit i think afterwards here as well so we've got where the tutorial actually came from in a second uh, and then it shouldn't take us that long to the goods factory by office but you weren't expected to see me today i like how the water reflects off the floor all right let's get on his toes now uh it's level here but i've got a feeling it's going to start climbing uh i'll stop at the junction at the entrance like we do the harbour so we'll get a bit of breaks in, ready for that. Uh, then we'll look at the schematics and see where we need to go. Well, this is nice and dry in the tunnel. Wheel slide going on there. Right. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Um, I fought off. Uh, cab light on so I can see what I'm doing here. There we are. Oh, cab light doesn't actually... There we are. So, we are going... We are at the goods factory and town. Where's that on this lot? It's over here. So... Looking at this, what have we got in front of us? What's this siding in front of us here? So these are sidings B, so we're coming in where B is. Um, there's a lot of sidings here. B, so we're coming in from this end here, B. Um, so the first thing for us to do is look at our actual map where we're supposed to go in, which is D5I. So we need to go back to the other map, go to D, which is this sidings. So we're going to have to do... Because we've got an engine on the back, we can actually turn right after the B yard, go across and then reverse, rather than going all the way through C. I feel like that might be the best thing to do. So let's crack on and do that. Um, turn the cab light back off. Uh, actually, I'll leave it on. No, I'll turn it off. I can't see outside very well with the cab light. I'm just like you wouldn't be able to in real life. Right. We can use this to uh, control where we're going, though. So I want to go right at this first one, then right at the second. Looks like it's taking us in the right direction. Because we want to go around to the right, all the way across, uh, to the back of the yards. It's actually the uh, passenger station there. So yeah, you got like um, service yard and stuff on the right, if you're in the right place.
So our yard should be these sidings over here. Yep, D5I there. That's the one we want. Okay. So we just want to get this train slowed down now in a second. Uh, Sanders can go off now. We'll swap to the other engine at the other end anyway. There's no point driving it from this one. So let's get the train slowed down. Clear the points at the back. So we can now flip those points across and then I can get out of this. Low coming to reverse. Brakes are off already. The brakes needle is showing released, which is good. And lights on the rear to headlights. Let's just go and examine the route that we're taking here before we do anything. So we're going to go left. We'll go back. There are plenty of locos here if we need extra locos. Uh, then we want to go, we're going to D5I, which is that one there on the left. So we want to go right there, then left. There, that should sort us for the right side. That also, by the way, that looks really nice. There we go. Right. Let's jump in the cab. At least the vein stopped. Although it should have stopped, I wish it had stopped a bit sooner. Would have made my life a bit easier. More sanding needed because it's still wet. Although it has stopped raining, the veil head is still wet, which is uh, that's nice. How it actually remembers that it's wet sort of thing. It takes time to dry up. Give the windows a wipe. How do you do the rear windscreen? Presumably there's a button somewhere for the rear wire. Oh, we'll forget about that for now. Right, cab light off. So we've got to stop the train, we've got to put the handbrake on, then we've got to go find the office. I haven't seen an office yet. There must be one around here somewhere. A D5I. Let's double check that's right. Uh, D5I. So that's fine. The whole lot's going on here. Despite it being a shunting uh, job, I think, that we picked up. That was a freight haul, I'm going to say. So the whole train comes up here. That viaduct, by the way, is where we were before. If we'd have not changed our directions. So we can run around in here as well, assuming that there's another track through. Which I hope there is, otherwise we're going to have some right fast as getting the locals back out. Get the train to a stand. We just need to put one of the handbrakes on now. Let's go in here. Um, I did put a, I did put a brake on, didn't I? We did. Oh, look at the elapsed time. We did it in 83 minutes. Well, I'm just going to put that on the floor for a sec. We got, we got 19,000 as well, so we've got enough for the multiple unit license, which is important. We need that. Um, we did it in 83 minutes against a bonus time of 85. If I had messed about for another two minutes there, we would have lost the bonus, so that's good to get. No damage or anything was taken. We did everything as we should have done. We got a total of 19,000. No environmental damage, which for me is amazing, because I usually do manage to do plenty of that. 20 past 11 in the evening when we've arrived. So, that brings the rather long episode for me to an end. Thanks as always for watching, guys. Please do keep your comments coming in, because your comments actually are really helping me. It's your comments where I'm learning more than I've learned in a lot of other things. So, appreciate those coming in. Please do keep your subs coming in as well. We have noticed the amount of love that we're getting for this uh, series so far, so... Appreciate you uh, subbing and enjoying the series, I hope. If you think there's some challenge that I should try and take on or anything like that in the actual series, then let me know. I'm looking for new things to do. If you think there's a suggestion of whether I should take the career path next with this game, again, let us know. I am sort of going blind, really. I don't, you know, I don't know this game very well at all. 
So I'm just sort of enjoying taking it as it comes. And I'm sure it's all very frustrating, the amount of faff I'm causing. But, um, yeah, hopefully uh, you can enjoy it. I noticed the weather forecast still says 7.21 there, but it shouldn't. But we can see where it did rain as forecast. Uh, before we end this episode, let us get the license we want, which is the multiple unit one. Go down there. 30,000. You first need to own concurrent orders one in order to buy this license. So... We can't buy the license then, so where concurrent orders one is ten thousand. Can we get them both? This is the question. Fees not cleared. Right, oh, I've got fees to clear as well. Uh, so probably gonna screw us over for this then. So we got fees to clear. Insurance only needs to pay one hundred to clear the fees. Right, okay. Uh where's my wallet? We should mm, we're gonna we're not gonna have enough. That is frustrating. That is very frustrating. Right, we've paid our fees anyway. Right, we'll end the episode here, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye.